my name is Laura from Houston, Texas. I am a lifelong Republican, but not a Trump supporter. Um, I think that the thing that has most upset me over the last few days, um, the last week or so, has been the abject failure of Republicans, some Republicans, to uphold their own oath of office and just their own standards of, of decency as a human. Um, I think that the fact that so many Republicans, even after the insurrection of the Capitol, voted to object to the certification of the Electoral College just because they assumed that the guardrails of democracy would hold, even though they knew it was a lie, um, and it was the consequence of their own direct actions in perpetuating that lie for so many months and weeks, um, that's very, very disappointing. And I think that one of the most offensive things to me is, is there are some of the arguments given now against impeachment, which are entirely unpersuasive. You know, the fact that, oh, well, he's going to be out of office anyway, so, so what's really the point? Well, what's the point? Um, well, the point is, is that the rule can't be that somebody in the last month or two of their term can violate their oath of office with abandon with no consequences because they'll, they'll be out of office anyway before you can remove them from office. That is a horrific precedent to set. Um, I think that the argument that, well, we just need unity. I think the most offensive case for that for me came from McClintock in California, who got up on this, the floor of the House of Representatives and invoked Lincoln's second inaugural address with malice towards none, with charity for all, let us bind up this nation's wounds. Um, as an excuse to not impeach and not hold anyone accountable. The offensive and historically illiterate kind of reference that he made is really shocking to me because yes, yes, the goal was to bind up the country after the Civil War, but you wanna know what happened as a part of that? Sherman marched through Georgia and they went through a multi-year process of reconstruction, um, which I think was pretty divisive to the people who had to live through it and they probably weren't very happy about it. But you know what? Evil has to be excised for, for there to be real unity. And I think that the Republican Party needs to have its own reconstruction. And the first step of that is for every single person who knew that Stop the Steal was a lie and voted to object to certification of the Electoral College, they need to stand up and say it was a lie. People need to hear that because they're not. And, and it's delusional, but, but people have been lied to. The second step is that impeachment needs to happen and, and conviction and removal and a bar from, from future power office also needs to happen. There has to be accountability for what has gone on and for the words and the violence and the lies. And I understand the individual Congress and how congressmen and how it is hard and it is difficult. And there are crazy people out there who will make death threats, but you know, with great power comes great, great responsibility. And if you can't be Spider-Man, and if you can't be the kind of person who can stand up and do the right thing when it's difficult for you to do so, then you need to resign. And because you have a position of power and authority and responsibility, and if you're not going to use that and withhold and uphold your own oath of office, then you need to go. And, and it hurts me to see how much fear of a, you know, powerless despot that these people are, are willingly giving to him. And the fact that, that a lot of people can't see that this whole situation and, and the, the consequences and, and the fear and the mob was created in part by their own actions. So people need to face the consequences. Republicans need to face the consequences, but there can't be any unity if we just pretend that this never happened.